Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. I am going to do a review of Rose and Bloom, I guess Eight Cousins and Rose and Bloom as a duology uh, review for the Louisa May 2020 read along. I just finished Rose and Bloom and I really, really enjoyed it. However, I have like one little hiccup, but once I got that past that, it was a perfect book. So just to start off with the premise of it, um, it follows Rose, at least the first one, it starts with Rose. She is a, a orphaned and her uncle is being cho has been chosen to be her guardian, if I can get the words out. So her uncle's been chosen to be her guardian and she goes to live with a bunch of aunts and her uncle along with her seven cousins. Such is the premise of eight cousins as she is one plus seven boys. And so she has to learn how to navigate in this world of boys she doesn't understand how they work she doesn't understand the energy she's very docile at first but then she really just grows and becomes a really independent and carefree but also really strong-willed in a good way uh, person so rose and bloom follows that uh, so the setup of the first book is all the cousins and the second book is rose as she just comes back from europe and she is trying to navigate life now as an adult and as a now heiress who has inherited her uh, inherited her money at the age of 21. It's a fun story. I'm going to get into spoilers now. If you haven't, you should pick them up. Now, I really enjoyed the cousin dynamic in the first one. I loved how it was all these boys trying to get figure out Rose. They don't know girls very well and then like she should figure them out and it's just a really fun balance. I really enjoyed the duo the dual aspect of the boys trying to figure out her for trying to figure the boys out along with uncle alec who has never been married and he is trying to raise a girl and he's doing this experiment to see how well she he can do with fresh air exercise and very little of what's expected in society i thought it was really well done and i really did enjoy it i also really enjoyed the fact that one of the characters <laughs> was reading so much by the fireplace that he needed uh, glasses and so he is a, he wears glasses for the rest of the duology which was really great to uh, see a character with vision that's not 2020 in light of that so into Rose and Bloom though I had a little hiccup with the fact that all of the aunts and uncles are saying Rose needs to marry one of the boys being one of her first cousins I didn't really <laughs> like that it was just jarring to me and I was like don't they know it's not okay I mean this isn't Jane Austen time anymore this is like Victorian era you know late 1860s but I guess it's true it did happen so once I go over, got over the whole cousins marrying cousins thing I had a blast I really <laughs> keep stinging. Um, I really did enjoy all the different relationships that were happening in this book, the female friendships with Phoebe. I want to, I keep writing it Phoebe, but it's, I think it's Phoebe. I really enjoyed her, um, her and Rose's sisterly relationship, but also uh, her and Archie as a couple and her trying to prove herself and not being just considered a gold digger by the family. And then I really appreciated um, Rose as she was trying to navigate this world of love and friends with money and how who values her for what reasons. I thought it was really great. And I definitely <laughs> was not rooting for a Rose and Charlie ending. I thought it was, I thought it would be too cliche. And I was just like, no, don't fall for the bad boy. He was also her cousin, but that's something I got over. But I did really like how it handled Charlie because Charlie struggled with alcoholism in my opinion. He was um, very, he had a hard time with that. He also was driving drunk and actually crashed and then ended up dying as a result of that. So it was very hard material to read, like hard content, but it was handled in a really great way I felt. It also was really approachable even though it takes place in 1860s, I think that's the decade it was set in, it's still very applicable today, even though the, heart, the drunk driving is like horse and carriage, it's still very applicable. And how Charlie just decided to have one last drink and that was it. And so he drove home and that was the end of it. And so it was very sad, but also very impactful. And I thought it was handled really well. And it didn't feel like, it felt like children could read it and appreciate it, but at the same time as an adult, I got a lot from that and how they dealt with that. But then Rose, after the fact, trying to deal with the, deal, trying to deal with it, like the emotions, because Charlie loved her, but she didn't love Charlie. 
Um, and so when Charlie's death happened and everyone assumed that she lost a lover, as they call it, so, you know, a boyfriend, um, she was really struggling with the fact that she did not feel that way about him, and yet that's what everyone assumed. So that whole death dilemma for Rose was really interesting to read. At the same time, though, I also found like it was really interesting to read about Mac in this situation. So that he's the one that doesn't have um, glasses. He's the one that has glasses. He doesn't have perfect vision. And in the first one, I was like, oh, what a great male-female friendship, you know? And then it turned into a romance in this one, which I didn't mind once I, once again, got over with Cousin Bart. But... I really did enjoy that development. I thought it was very well crafted and I thought it was something where it wasn't just forced on Rose and Rose just didn't wake up one morning and feel this way. Um, it was something that grew over the period of the of like the last half of the book. But then also the little matchmaking of the others in her family who were trying to get them together and trying to encourage this match as they felt like it was a good one. I thought it was really well done. I also really loved the whole idea of um, adoption in this where it's not for everyone but it is a really good thing as Rose, well, Mac adopts a child and <laughs> or takes this child out of a home and then basically Rose adopts uh, this little girl and so she's trying to do this and someone else, one of her friends tries to follow her footsteps and adopt a child as well. And it does not go well because they are not in the right place for it, nor are they the right people for it, her family. So it was interesting to read that. And I was really happy that it showed how it can be a really good thing for a child, a really life-changing thing. And you need to be ready for the hard times because the hard times will come with adoption. So I really enjoyed all of those aspects. I gave Rose and Bloom five stars. I think I gave uh, Eight Cousins five stars as well. Eight Cousins did have some more sensitive stuff that was going on, some inappropriate uh, racism that was in it, but it was also very to the times. So it's harder to, to fault in a sense. It is a fault, but it is also something where it was something that was very commonly thought and it is something that is not okay um, but it is something to be expected when reading a classic like that age. So that's something else where it was a little bit a little bit seen in the in Rose and Bloom, but not nearly as much as it does not focus on those characters. So yeah, really enjoyed them. I highly recommend the series. I thought they were so great. And I might even go as far to say they are better than the Little Women series. Not better than the Little Women book, but the whole series, I think. This just duology was perfect in so many ways about family, about friendships, about love and all those things. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Really recommend you should check them out and join us for the Louisa May 2020 read along. So the next book will be Hospital Sketches. I don't know if I'll do a singular review on that one. It is a nonfiction about Louisa May's, Louisa May Alcott's life um, as she was a nurse during the Civil War. So. I'm excited to pick up that one and I will let you know my thoughts in my wrap up or in another individual video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to and like this video and I will see you all next time with another video. Bye for now.